So this is just going to be a real quick uh, video on Venus flytraps. Um, I keep lots of different plants, uh, mainly carnivorous plants. Um, but today I'm just going to focus on Venus flytraps. Um, they're one of the easiest carnivorous plants to take care of. Um, for the most part, uh, the main thing you want to worry about is water, what kind of water you're giving them, and then what kind of uh, soil. Um, I would put soil in quotation marks because you're not really using like traditional soil like you know like topsoil or anything like that in the wild carnivorous plants live in bogs kind of and those bogs are very nutrient poor that's why they eat you know animals and stuff and insects to get nitrogen um, but if you put them in a soil that has um, too much nutrients in it it will burn their roots and it will kill them um, they'll just get too much of it here's some more over here most of these are b52s it's a color morph where they have all kinds of red on the inside. Um, some of them are normals too. This one's having a flower stalk. Um, but yeah, uh, you want to use distilled water. Um, you can also use RO water, um, reverse osmosis water. Um, some mun municipalities have low enough TDS, total dissolved solids, to where you can actually use the tap water. Um, but you would definitely need to test your water to make sure. Um, Rainwater works fine too, but you know, I live in California and rain is hot commodity so um, for us I mainly use either bottled distilled water or I use my RO system um, but RO systems are a little bit of a pain you know so not everybody's willing to do that but if you have a lot of plants you definitely want to get an RO system um, for just one or two it's not a big deal um, you can probably see in a lot of these um, at least over here um, the carcasses of all the flies and stuff it's caught um, these guys are excellent at uh, keeping down bug numbers um, some people choose to feed their Venus flytraps, but I don't. I don't really think it's necessary. They do an excellent job of catching food just on their own. Um, just to give you an idea of how big the traps are. Like, there's my thumb. Um, B-52 is one of, like, the bigger trap morphs. Um, there are bigger ones. There's different kinds of giants and stuff. Um, but, yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, really cool, beautiful plants. Um... They tolerate really uh, a wide variety of temperatures. They need to go dormant during the winter, and they like it actually in like in the 40s-ish. Um, they can freeze overnight. It's not that big of a deal. Their original habitat is like the Carolinas, so they can freeze. Um, they can also take it pretty hot, um, but they need their their substrate to be moist in order for them to do that. Like down here in, um, in the Bay Area, it can get into the triple digits during the summer, and they do just fine outside. In fact, um, the reason why they look so so clustered together. Sometimes you'll see Venus flytraps with like really long stems, but that's just um, so they can catch more sun. But if they get a lot of sun, they don't really have a stem, they just have the trap. Since they're focusing, they don't have to focus so much on growing that part in order to absorb sunlight. Because their main food is from the sun. It's just the extra nutrients they get from, uh, from eating flies and other insects and stuff. Excuse the plane flying above. This is outside. Um, oh, here's a red one. Sometimes they come in red. Um, there's all sorts of different Venus flytrap morphs. I have some more growing in the back, but they're really tiny. They're not even worth showing you right now. Um, Venus flytraps take a little while to grow. Probably like two years, three years until they're this size. You know? Um, this is like a tiny itty bitty baby right there. And then that's like a one year old, you know? Um, these guys produce seeds, as you've seen by the flower. Um, you can self-pollinate them, and they will make seeds. Um, however, it does set the plant a back a little bit. Um, another way you can propagate them is by, um, you can clone them. Um, they will make their own divisions on their own. They'll clone themselves, but what you can also do is pull off traps at the base of the leaf and plant them, or like keep them in distilled water, and uh, they will grow from there. They will start a whole new trap. So potentially you could have you know, a plant that lives forever. Um, but they're really cool. Um, the main, like, substrate I like to use, um, I'll either use just long fibrous sphagnum moss, maybe mix a little bit of perlite into that, or I'll use 50-50 peat moss and perlite. Those are the main two ones you want to go with. Um, it really depends on your climate and stuff. Um, you don't want to, like, uh, the, the problem is sometimes with peat and the sun, it kind of bakes it. It gets, like, real hard, rock hard. Um, you don't have to worry about that with the sphagnum. Um, right now the, the dish is empty. I'm about to refill it. But I recommend um, basically how to water them is keep them in a tray and 
fill in about like an inch, inch and a half of water. And then when it dries, when it runs out and you don't see any water anymore, wait a day and then refill it. Um, unless it's really hot, in which case, you know, just to keep them from drying out. They can't dry out completely. If you dry them out completely, they will die. But yeah, just like one last look over of these guys. They're just beautiful plants. Very fascinating. Um, I hope to, in the future, I'll do some videos about um, my Saracenia, um, my pitcher plants and stuff. I'll explain what they are and what they're all about. Um, but that's for another day. So, yeah, thanks. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, have a great day, guys.